In a relatively recent paper that I found online, I actually read a really interesting analysis of why uh, the scientists from Brown University are actually convinced that Pluto has a liquid ocean underneath. I'm going to explain this theory to you and give you a pretty good uh, analysis of why they think so and uh, why I think so as well. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> And so here we are a few thousand kilometers above Pluto looking at its surface and this is very similar to what the New Horizons probe witnessed when it passed by Pluto back in 2015. Now so t having taken those photos and having analyzed the surface of uh, Pluto, the scientists from Brown University and here um, I'm talking about Amy Barr and Mark uh, Parmentier and also their student uh, Noah Hammond. Uh, they've sort of analyzed the actual cracks that you kind of can see here and came to a conclusion that because of the the way that these cracks look compared to some of the other cracks on some of the other objects, specifically uh, Ganymede, Europa, and also Charon, which is right next door, somewhere right there, um, they've decided to conclude that uh, not only did Pluto have an ocean uh, millions of years ago, but it probably still does underneath the ice layer. Now, so how did they actually figure this out? So first of all, let's uh, we'll take a look at these cracks right here. Just uh, maybe I'm going to pause this for a second and just kind of uh, try to uh, visualize and memorize what they look like. Try to maybe also take a look at this crack right here because this is a really good representation of what they're talking about. Now, let's take a look at Sharon, which is, I believe, right... Where is Sharon? Oh, there you are, you were right behind me. Uh, so we're going to go to Sharon and take a look at it as well because we also got the photos of Sharon from the same mission. And um, Sharon obviously also has these different types of cracks, but they do look uh, slightly different. Uh, they are, have a slightly different origin and they have obviously slightly different uh, properties as well. And so this is what they've concluded and this is um, how they thought about this really interesting theory. So first of all, all of these cracks are formed because with time as the ocean freezes and the ice expands, if you've ever put a, a bottle in a freezer and it explodes on you, it's because essentially ice expands as it freezes. So essentially as the water underneath freezes and the ice expands, these cracks form in a similar fashion that ice inside of a water bottle would expand and essentially uh, crack it as well. And this is, of course, very, very similar to the cracks we observed on, on Jupiter's moon Ganymede, which you can kind of see if I zoom in really, really closely. There is actually quite a lot of different ice cracks as well. But they are very similar to the ones on Charon and slightly different from the ones on Pluto. And I'm going to explain to you why in a second. But so here... You can kind of see these uh, variety of cracks on the surface. And the other object that is very sort of famous for its cracks is uh, Jupiter's moon Europa, which has a tremendous amount of these cracks on the surface. There's actually so many that uh, you could possibly not even have enough names to name all of them. And so here is what's happening here. So obviously uh, these are formed as the... Um, volume of the object changes uh, and because of the change in volume um, the surface starts to crack but the thing is because Pluto is actually larger than Charon it would actually have a thicker layer of ice as a matter of fact it would very likely have so much ice and so much water that um, if it actually had the entire surface ice and ice underneath it freeze um, it would actually have a layer that would be very likely to be over 260 kilometers in uh, in thickness. And what happens when you have so much ice on the surface is that the ice underneath the surface ice starts changing its structure. It actually becomes something called ice 2. Now, you may have never heard of this because we don't really see this very often, but in, uh, in the universe, essentially in real life, it's possible for us to create different types of water ice. There's not just ice that we're used to, but there's up to 16 different types of ices with different properties that we were able to create in, uh, in the laboratory. Now, the entire ice here is very likely to be just normal ice. A normal ice, it essentially expands as it freezes and it creates these fractures. But what happens with ice too is that it doesn't actually expand when it freezes, but it does contract. So if Pluto had a thick ice layer underneath all of this, it would actually contract 
and create very different types of fractures. These fractures that you see on the surface right here would actually look very similar to the ones you saw from Europa. They would look more like this, and uh, this is essentially because uh, we think that both Europa and Ganymede may actually have quite a lot of ice underneath as well, and some of it or most of it is possibly even ice too, and with time Europa and Ganymede may have actually contracted and lost a lot of their volume and um, had these what we call compressional fractures uh, form on the surface, but Pluto doesn't seem to have them. As a matter of fact, if you look at these fractures on Pluto, they do look like they were a result of expansion, especially because you can kind of see it's as if the middle part here sort of spread apart. And so this kind of suggests that there is really no ice 2 underneath and that the layer on top is not very thick because ice 2 wasn't really formed, which also suggests that whatever is underneath must be liquid water. Which is actually a very, very interesting observation, and I'm actually kind of surprised that someone was able to analyze this so thoroughly. But they seem to be actually correct about this, because um, if Pluto actually had a lot more frozen water on its surface and underneath, it would definitely be much smaller in size. It would actually shrink dramatically and create quite a lot of various compressional fractures on its surface. And uh, if you actually want to analyze this even further, we know of another object that has quite a lot of... Um, ocean and quite a lot of liquid water underneath, but actually has almost no or absolutely no fractures on the surface. And this object is, of course, our beautiful neighbor Ceres. Now, Ceres, if you actually look at it, except for the actual occasional asteroid collision uh, sign, doesn't actually have that many fractures. As a matter of fact, I don't really see any, but we know for a fact it does have liquid ocean. And this is a, a really good example of an object that has relatively thin surface, but a relatively thick layer of liquid water underneath. And we've actually been able to detect cryovolcanic eruptions that indicate that there is definitely water underneath. And so this would be an example of an object that uh, doesn't really have much thickness on top, much hard shell on top, and most of the underneath part of it is actually liquid water with very likely uh, a very thick, a solid, uh, rocky core in the center. So, and I guess there's a little bit of fracturing right here, which uh, indicates that it did freeze just a little bit, but not a lot. And I guess all of this indicates that just studying the actual photos from, from all of these missions to Ceres and Pluto, um, we can actually study the geology of an object and even calculate and estimate how much of liquid water and how much of other stuff it actually has underneath just by observing what we know about other objects in our solar system and knowing how water behaves under certain conditions. And specifically here I'm talking about formation of other types of ices, like ice 2, ice 3, and so on and so forth, that actually only forms under extreme temperatures or extreme pressures that are only uh, usually present in the middle of a planet or moon or a very large object. And this is why smaller objects, specifically smaller asteroids or even smaller dwarf planets, would not actually have any of these features because they just don't have enough mass. Anyway, so I hope you learned something from this video and I hope you enjoy watching it. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to share this video and maybe like it as well. I'll see you guys in the next video where we're going to talk about something else related to space, math, sciences or possibly something else. And if you did enjoy watching this, don't forget there's also a Patreon page where you can help this channel grow by supporting us directly. Thank you for watching, give me later and as always, bye bye.